Hey everybody. So it's been about three days since the last update, so I thought I'd catch everybody up on what all we do got done, if I can remember everything. But uh, it feels like we're making good progress right now. I don't know, some stages of the build, it feels like nothing's going on. Other stages, it feels like you're just, you know, tearing away at it and uh, making great progress. So, so anyway, um, yeah, let's look at the truck. <clears throat> As you can see, we've made pretty good progress with the engine. It, it's fully installed um, for the most part. There's a couple minor details, but uh, yeah, we got an air, air cleaner, air filter to put in, and a little ductwork there that we're waiting to come in. Um, but we were able to charge the AC today. We got oil in it. We got filters on it. The cooling system is is filled up because my brother stuck the transmission in this morning um yeah just made uh made good progress on this engine there a day or two ago i got the exhaust on um, we replaced everything new from the turbo all the way to the the used pipes that we put on um run the turb uh, run the exhaust over top of the transmission next to the frame a couple of generic 90 degrees and we used a flat t pipe that is actually a freight liner part to span the uh the the from frame rail to frame rail and so yeah that way we're using very minimal flex in our system um, flex is something that sh is useful and needed, but only in small quantities. As you can see there, um, I think I used like six inches of flex. Same with the other side over there. We've got about 22 inches of flex right there between, uh, the elbows coming down off the turbo and the elbow going down towards the Y pipe. And honestly, that is still, you know, three or four inches longer than I like. I really think that your best about a foot and a half of flex is, is about the most you should use. But when it comes to exhaust, <clears throat> you know, it, Sometimes you, you got to do something like that, but in our case, if we're going to put it on and we're going to use that much, I'm, well, in any case, no matter what exhaust we're putting together, um, we always use stainless flex and always use stainless preformed band clamps, and we never reuse a band clamp. When we put an exhaust together, we want it to seal and last until the, the steel pipes rust out. And so basically you, you just don't reuse flex because when you put a band clamp over flex and tighten it over a pipe, it crimps down on it. And so you can't get it over um, another piece of pipe after it's been crimped down once. And um, so yeah, never reuse flex. Never use, reuse the clamps. They'll never seal well. And furthermore, always, if you got a step in the joint, like going from flex to um, <clears throat> to a five inch outside diameter pipe, you gotta, you gotta use a preformed band, band clamp. It, otherwise, it's just never gonna seal well. The flat clamps, um, I mean, I do stock a couple and I can't even tell you right now what, when you use it. I know every once in a while it's appropriate, but um, it, that's just such a rare, weird occasion. Um, you're never butting pipe to pipe, you know, of the same size. So you should never be, um, never be using anything but a, a preformed clamp. I, the one exception, I guess, that I can think of is some um, some exhaust systems, like uh, aftermarket systems, you get a uh, say a seven inch exhaust that bells down to five, and then 
with like picket elbows. And then you got a Y pipe that's tapered down to where the Y pipe goes inside that five inch. And so basically um, they bell it at the end. And so you got like five inch butting to five inch um, out, outside diameter, outside diameter. And so in that case, you use a five inch flat clamp. I mean, that's that's about the only time it's appropriate. You just never use anything but a preform. If you want your exhaust to hold up and not work on it all the time, um, you need to be using brand new flex, brand new clamps, and, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, basically, we don't just replace one little piece of an exhaust, typically. We, we replace the entire... Uh, entire area that we're working on it's just not worth it to to do patch jobs on exhaust most of the time um, so anyway you can see here we got our our uh, air intake uh, to the uh, air to air uh, in here we went from a t twin turbo setup to a single turbo which meant that the ductwork here had to be completely changed. And so we went into the parts room and I found a used air to air pipe that we chopped in half. And then we used a little bit of the exist or of the, the original air to air piping and we cut them, welded them. My brother did all that and did a very nice job. Um, real happy with that. It fits really well. Um, so yeah, you, you gotta be creative <clears throat> when, uh, when changing stuff over like that. We, we got our seven inch, or I mean six inch elbow here on the turbo. We got a seven, seven inch outlet on the air cleaner assembly. So we ordered today a seven inch, 45 degree reducing elbow um, and then a six inch 45 degree elbow to piece all this together and so yeah hopefully we'll get that next week and and be able to finish that up um, after that you know we get batteries and fuel in the truck and this engine's ready to start we installed some lights in it um, some switchblade blade, um, banks and some little mini watermelons. Uh, we don't have air cleaners externally, but, uh, you know, those are kind of like mimic some of the look of that. And I like it. It's something a little different. And I thought it, you know, thought it was a really good idea. Switched over the clearance lights from clear to amber lenses. We added some, uh, marker lights under the mirrors we wired in the mirrors um, these are moto mirrors and so they the heated mirror part will will uh, angle itself from top to bottom off of the the factory door switch along with the entire assembly will rotate side to side off of the, the factory door switch up here We've been finishing off the interior, got more interior lights wired up, um, glass lens, LED setups up there. Been trimming the bottom panels around the floor um, so that they'll fit the wood floor because now the, the floor is three quarters of an inch higher off the, the, the bottom than it was before. Um, added some more foot lighting for uh, under the dash and stuff um, we got our airlines for our uh, for our seats put in so the interiors coming together pretty well we routed wires for the amp and such uh, so we're, we're really coming along we got the whole system running off of just one battery on the floor right now because we've been having trouble getting the brackets to hold the, the new stainless battery boxes. But that's coming. That's coming. Um, like I said, 
Mark got the transmission up today. Uh, today I was working on fabricating um, brackets to hang off of the the fuel tank saddles that'll hold the air tanks. The the air tanks used to be mounted on the outside of the frame in front of the the front drives right in this area. So we got rid of that, and now. They're going to hang out behind the fuel tanks and uh, and give us that cleaner look and look, allow us to see a little bit of frame. It's not a super long truck, but but uh, stuff like that really makes a difference on the look of a truck. Um, so yeah, I, I'm sure we did some more other than that, but yeah, that's that's a major project progress we made in the last three days. So uh, check back in a couple, few more days, and and uh, I'm sure this truck's going to start looking really good after we get beyond this point. Get some fuel tanks and stainless boxes on there, and and uh, people are going to start looking at this thing. Talk to y'all later.